Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, so what did you think about the lab assignment? Does anybody have any questions? Yes, yes Gerardo. Uh, I, I don't have a question about the test, but uh, oh. you, you know for uh, do the other exercise in the lab assignment, uh, I have a problem doing the those exercises that you have to, uh, I don't know how it says to wrap the word and put it in in the space. You know, it's it's not working for me because I tried too many times and and the word it doesn't fit in the spaces and oh, the word okay. the word go back to the <laughs> to the original space. Okay. But uh, but for the test, I don't have any problem. Okay. Well, I'm glad you asked that question um, because the My Writing Lab is new for me. This is my first time using it. Um, it's also new for you guys. So this is a great time to ask questions. And what I want to ask you to do sometime today, if you could go in there and take a screenshot of whatever the problem is. And um, maybe I can find out where it is because I need to know which module, which exercise, which question, um, so I can try to get over there and see what it looks like. So could you send me a screenshot of that today? Uh, teacher, uh, I, I, had, I have a problem to take a, a screenshot oh, okay. the computer, but I, I, want, uh, I, wanna, I want to know if I can send a picture from my cell phone to email to you to your email. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, students have done that before too. They just grab their phone and take a picture. Um that's another option. Yeah. Yeah, you could do that. Okay. And then um yeah, and then if I'll look at it today and tomorrow and hopefully I'll get some some kind of answer for you by Thursday, okay? All right. Um, let's see. Anybody else have questions about the lab assignment, about the post test, anything about that online program? Teacher, do you mean lab assignment, the one from last week in my writing lab? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Good. Most of you did really well with the two post tests. And what I did was I took both of the post tests and I got the average grade of both. And I recorded that as one grade in Blackboard. So uh, the grade is already there if you want to go check. Um, our next lab assignment is going to be due next Friday, October 2nd. It's already in the My Writing Lab. If you go there and you click on the calendar, and you look at October 2nd, you'll see there are two more post tests that will be due. So this week, what you're going to do is start working to prepare for those post tests because post test means after test. That means after you did all the practice and you uh, looked at the notes, if they have a video, if you watch the video, if you, you know, did all the work and then at the end is a post test. So I want to make sure you're working on the correct module and exercises to get ready to take that post test. So that's what this week and next week is for. All right. So uh, if anybody still needs help with the lab assignment, like knowing what to be working on or anything like that, I can actually show you after class in Blackboard here or you can email me and we can set up a time. I can take you there and kind of show you what you should be clicking on, what you should be working on. Okay, so that's the lab assignment. Um, what's happening this week? Well, I've got, um, you probably, if you looked in the folder, you've probably seen that um, at the end of this week, you have a test or a quiz um, remember a couple weeks ago, we took a sentence quiz. This week, we're doing a paragraph quiz, but we're not going to write our own paragraph, okay? We're not ready for that. 
you're going to take a quiz about paragraph formatting. And chapter two of our book is about paragraph structure and formatting. And so on Thursday this week, I'm going to cover that material about um, what a paragraph looks like and what, um, how you're supposed to format it. Like on a piece of paper, what is it supposed to look like? Um, so we're going to talk about that on Thursday. So my advice is don't submit the quiz until Thursday night or Friday, okay? If you try to do the quiz today or tomorrow, you probably will not be ready. So um, you can look at the quiz to see what's on it, but my advice is not to submit the quiz in Blackboard until Thursday night or Friday. That will give you some time and me some time to show you what to do and what uh, the quiz is all about, okay? This week, we are covering chapters one and two. Um, chapter one will be really quick. Um, it's a very short chapter. And then chapter two, we're covering on Thursday, okay? So that's what's coming up this week. Any questions about that? No for me, teacher. No, teacher. Okay, good. And thank you, those of you who volunteered and sent me your uh, optional journal assignment last week. Um, I think we figured out how to use it, and so uh, we will use that software when we do our uh, graded paragraphs, okay? So thank you to Gerardo and um, Sammy, I think, or Carolina. Whoever turned it in, thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right, let's do our review question. Nobody put your answer up, up there yet, so let's just do this one together. Um, why are prepositional phrases important when we're looking for subjects? Um, because subject is not gonna is not going to be in the in the middle of prepositional phrase. Yes. And I'm typing it here. Because the subject is almost never inside a prepositional phrase. Okay? So if you are reading a sentence and you're like, oh, I know the subject, and then there's a preposition right before that, then you're probably wrong. That's not the subject. You need to keep looking, okay? So it's very important for you to begin to recognize prepositions and different words that you're using in your writing, um, and that will help you to conjugate verbs correctly and make sure that you have a subject. Um, like, for example, if I have a sentence, um, what about this sentence? In Mexico, eat a lot of fruit. It looks like, well, it looks like Mexico's a subject. Eat is the verb. Looks good to me. But is there a mistake here? Uh, yes, because it's in a prepositional phrase. Yeah, because in Mexico is a prepositional phrase. So we can put our parentheses around this. And we can say, hey, the subject is not inside of this. So that means this is a, a big mistake right here. And it's in, uh, in your writing, I would call this a fragment mistake. Fragments, we'll talk about those a little bit later, but basically they're incomplete sentences. This is a big, big problem uh, if it's a graded paragraph assignment because I will mark off points for this, okay? So we need to be able to recognize, hey, wait, I don't have a subject here. So I need to say in Mexico, and then maybe we, well, not capital, but <laughs> it won't be capital. In Mexico, we eat a lot of fruit. Or in Mexico, people, or um, 
whatever it is. You need a subject though. And that would be now a complete sentence. Okay. Okay. Any questions, class? No. Yeah. All right. All right. Doing good. Let's go ahead and go to our book. I'm going to clear this screen and we're going to check our homework. Practice 11 and 12, page 214 and 215. Oops, yeah, okay, page 214. And I hear somebody turning their pages. Oh, hmm. sorry. <laughs> I think it's funny sometimes. Yesterday, I was teaching, and one student had people talking in the background. There was a dog. There was, like, a bunch of noise. I'm like, oh, I can hear you. Okay, let's check these. Practice 11, and you guys are going to help me with this. Um, so, let's see. Carolina, let's start with you. I want you to answer number 1, 2, and 3 in Practice 11, page 214. One, two, and three. Mm. In number one, I, I, instead of is, I put are. Good. And number two, I think it's correct. Okay. So number two, what is the subject? Mm. Evil characters. Evil characters. Mm -hmm. Evil characters. Okay, that is correct. Good. So is that singular or plural? Mm. Singular. But I have um, characters, that little oh. S right there tells me there's more than one. Okay, plural. Okay, good. So if it's plural, what do we do with the verb? Mm. I don't know, did you? Okay, if the verb, mm -hmm. if the verb goes with, um, like if it has good morning alan i saw you just joined us if we have he she or it good morning good morning then the verb in present will have an s oh okay like he does she does but if we have the subject they you we or i mm -hmm. then we don't need that es so we've got like a they subject because it's characters so what should the verb be we do not need the es on the verb okay so what what is the correction we need don't. to make don't well don't would make it negative what about do What about just do? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so do and does are both affirmative sentences or uh, verbs, okay? Do goes with I, we, you, they. I do, we do, they do. And does goes with he, she, it. Okay, good. And uh, Carolina, what did you put for number three? I think it's correct, teacher. Nope, we're missing some, uh, there's a mistake with the verb. Um, so, Carolina, what is the subject? Let's go back to that again. What's the subject? Mm. Um, one novel? Yes, so is that singular or plural? Singular. 
Yeah, if it's singular and we're using present, simple present tense, remember we talked about the S. So what? Remember, uh, show, we're going to have to add an S to show. Shows? Yeah. Make it shows. Okay, so here are my little notes for you up at the top on the right side. He, she, and it. Mm -hmm. So it, one novel, that would be the same as it. He, she, and it subjects. I need to put a comma here. Wait a second. He, she, or it subjects. Whoops, that didn't work. Um, they need to have the go with the S on the verb if, if the verb is in the present tense. If it's in the past tense, it doesn't matter. We don't have an S. You know, I could say one novel showed two novels. Two novels showed the verb would be the same in the past, okay? But in the present tense, simple present tense, we are going to have this S sometimes and sometimes no S on the verb. Okay. All right. Any questions, Carolina? No, teacher. Thank you. Okay, good. Thank you for helping us with one, two, and three. Um, I want to go to Sammy next. Sammy, can you do four, five, and six, please? Yes. Um, I think number four is correct. Okay, that's that's correct. Good. What about five? Uh, five uh, is drinks. Yes. We need an S on there. Why? Uh, because um, subject is singular. Yeah, the subject is singular. The subject is Dr. Jekyll. That's the yes. same as he. Yes. Okay, good. And what about? And um, number six is correct. Yes, number six is correct. Yes. Okay, who has questions? If you have a question, raise your hand and um, I will call on you. Anybody have a question? Raise your hand. Not for me, teacher. Okay, we're doing good. Um, let's have Gerardo. Can you do seven, eight, nine, please? Yes, teacher. <laughs> or number. Uh, Number seven, you said, right? Yes. Uh, I think it's... Uh, That's correct. And the subject is the doctor. Yes. And for number A, the subject is uh, both characters. Yes. And... I think it's only with a yes. Good. And this word is reside. Reside oh. means to live oh, or, okay. to, or to remain, to stay or live, to, to be in one place. Okay, good. Reside. And for the number nine, I think it's correct. Yep, that's so, right. Uh, Subject is the Nobel. Yes. And shows is correct. Okay, good. So number nine is correct. And then I'll do number 10. Number 10, we should change the verb to exist. No S. Okay. Good. Okay, class, raise your hand if you have a question on practice 11. I put all the answers on the screen. So let me know if you have a question. 
Okay, let's go to okay, uh, practice 12, page 215. This one was difficult for me. <laughs> I know, I know it would be difficult for you guys. Uh, this is, it's got a lot of things to look at. Um, so let me do the first few for you guys, and then I'll call on you to help me answer some. Okay, so so what are we supposed to do in practice 12? It says underline the correct subject and circle the correct form of the verb that goes with that subject. Okay, now in most of these sentences, you're going to find there's more than one subject and verb pair in each sentence. Okay, so that makes it hard. So let me set this up on the screen here. Um, let's see, subjects and verbs. So we're going to have, number one, we need to um, underline I, oops, I messed up, underline I and then circle find, okay? Now this is inside of a, uh, adjective clause. You remember those interrupting words, who, which, and that? Okay, this is inside what we call adjective clause. So you can put parentheses around in which I find myself, in which I find myself. And inside that, we have a subject and verb. Okay, so Gerardo, do you have a question? Yes, so in this case, um, because it's a interrupted word that is which you said. It's so, called an adjective clause. Okay, so about <clears throat> I don't know how to explain. <clears throat> I don't know how to ask. So how about the preposition that is in? It doesn't affect. Okay, that's a great question because you think, wait a second, prepositional phrase right? We don't have a subject. Then why is I a subject, right? Good yes. question. Okay. In is a preposition, but this is not a prepositional phrase because in a prepositional phrase, we never have a subject and verb. Okay. A phrase means it's not a complete subject and verb. It, it can only be a piece of something. Oh. So, what we have here is kind of complicated, but it's called a clause. And a clause has a subject and verb. Now, really what this comes from, okay, um, which I find myself in, which I find myself in. Okay. Have you ever heard of somebody, like maybe they said, the apartment that, I live in. Yes. Right? Okay, that little in at the end, it, we have to have that in, okay? But what's happening is in this sentence, they're just putting the in at the front, in which I find myself. So really, um, the in is important to the whole clause, but this is not a phrase. This is a clause, okay? And I'll just write it on the screen here. Um, this would be something great to do more study with adjective clauses. Um, we study these in grammar class, I believe, uh, level two and three of grammar. We oh. do look at adjective clauses or different types of clauses. In our class, if you guys remember, um, I found out that we're not studying clauses in this level. We're just studying uh, words, phrases. So this chapter is a little bit confusing because they put some clauses in here. Um, but kind of keep it in the back of your mind a little bit. And we will come back to this in level two. When you guys get to level two, we'll come back and talk about clauses. All right. So I goes with find. And... There's another one in this sentence. We have man 
This one's tricky. I hope you got this one. Man is a subject that goes with is. Man goes with is. Look at how far apart the man from is is. Okay. But remember, we talked about interrupting words. So the, the part that says, who has flaxen hair, a bristly straw colored mustache, and a dropping lip, all of that is interrupting words. Okay. So we've got to underline man and we circle is. And I do not expect you to be experts at this. I'm not going to give you a quiz over this chapter just because I, I think it is this part especially is very challenging for level one. OK, but I have to cover this because it's in our subject verb agreement chapter and it is a part of subject and verb connections. OK, so this is kind of just an introduction to it. Okay, let's go to the next one. Um, we underline we, we circle stare. Okay. Okay. Yes. And the next, the next sentence, underline eyes, circle R. Underline, um, I'm trying to write it and talk at the same time. The next one, underlined sound and circle is. Okay, so these are the subjects that go with the verbs. And then the last part there uh, on the page, underline man, circle appears. It's actually, the, the verb is really who, I mean, sorry, the subject is really who, but they're talking about what does who refer to. So we're, it's referring to man. So we're underlying man with circle appears. Turn the page, underline I and circle do. So I is the subject, do is the verb, number two. Um, and then we want to circle, or sorry, underline you circle were underlying name circle is okay and underline spots circle were okay if you have a question click on the raise your hand button okay so spots and then were and then ship and has ship is a subject has is a verb and then those is a subject and were is the verb and i just went ahead and did all these just to kind of make it quicker but um the this the answers are here on the whiteboard and raise your hand if you have a question Okay, so that was your homework um, from this chapter. Let's skip over to practice three on page 221. Practice three, page 221. And let's see, um, who's next? Um, Alan, can you answer? In practice three, can you answer number one and two? Teacher, I couldn't work with uh, practice three. Okay. Okay, no problem. We'll just give you the answers. Today's a free day for you. <laughs> okay, um, Lucia, uh, do, you have, you. do you have the answer to one, two, and three? The first three answers. Page two twenty one. Yes, teacher. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, the first 
uh, I circle it's invites with S and received with V at the end. Okay, you circle it. Does that mean that it's wrong? I'm sorry, teacher. When you circled it, does that mean that it's wrong? Yes, the following program should be doing the present and the past tense with the program to make sense. Yes. Uh, one day Buddha invites. Wait, the the I'm sorry, teacher. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, please. <laughs> My apologies. Now uh, this is not time for phone calls. No, I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, yes, I. I don't remember what I did here. I I circle invites in the second line. I circle received. Okay. So let's stop for a second. You're circling them, but what it says is to edit. Edit means to correct it, make it correct. There are nine mistakes with verbs, so we need to cross out things and rewrite it correctly. So first of all, um, invites, um, why did you circle that? Is it wrong or is it, are you just circling the verbs? Uh, the, the verb. You're just the circling verbs. the verbs you see. Verbs. Mm -hmm. Okay, so invites is, there's no problem with invites. So we don't need to correct that one. Do you see another verb that is wrong that we need to correct? Okay. I think you did the assignment in a different way. So, you know what? It's okay, Lucy. Why don't you just listen and we will tell you the corrections. You can go back later and look at it, okay? All right, let's go on. Um, who's next on my list of people? Um, Carolina? Yes, teacher. Can you tell me what are the three mistakes, the first three mistakes that you found? Um, I found the first one I changed to receives an invitation in the second sentence. And then is supposed Yep. So we change was to is. Is supposed to invite uh -huh. yeah. the cat. Yes. Good. And then in the next sentence, however the rat is. Yes. Okay. So what we're doing here, if we just take a moment and look at this, we are changing the past tense verbs into present tense. Receives. Is. Is. Okay, why are we doing this, Carolina? Why did we change it to present? Mm. You remember we talked about verb consistency? Mm, yeah. Mm. remember what that means? Okay, so let me let me explain it. Verb consistency means you're keeping the same verb tense according to what you're trying what you're trying to do. So if you're talking about look at the beginning of the paragraph. It says according to Chinese astrology one day Buddha invites does everybody see invites? If you've got that in present tense, you're starting a story and it's in present tense. It's kind of like um, 
it's it's one way of telling a story. But we're talking about um, we got to keep the verbs consistent. We started with the present tense. So that means the rest of the verb tense needs to be present. The rat receives an invitation and he is supposed to invite the cat and so on and so on all the way to the bottom. The last sentence is also in present. Buddha decides that there will be no year of the cat. Okay, so what um, it it's, might be confusing because it looks like, wait, I thought this is a story in the past. Shouldn't we use past tense? And yes, you could, you could put this all in past. Invited, received, all of that. You could put them in the past. But look what the directions say. It says correct nine verbs to tell the story in present tense. So they're telling you here they want you to use present tense. Okay. So Lucia, do you have a question? Uh, yes, teacher. I think uh, the next sentence, I am correct. <laughs> I think I think uh, the, the correct answer here. For example, in the next line, on the day of the celebration, only 12 animals. Instead of can, I wrote could. Okay. Yeah, in past. Okay, but what the, the directions want you to use present, not past. In the directions, they oh. say make the story in present. I I made, but I I I, lot, I have a lot of mistakes here. I I'm sorry, teacher. I, I didn't understand the the instructions. I'm sorry. Okay, it's all right. It's just um, and it, it is a little bit confusing because it looks like a story. You think maybe putting it in past, but they want you to put it in present. Sometimes we can tell stories that are in present tense especially if it's a story that we tell a lot of times like a like a, a legend um like the story of the three little pigs you know a story that um it, we can use present for stories but think about in your paragraphs and in your journals and things when you're telling a story about a vacation that you took or um you're telling a story about something that happened in your past then I want you to use all past tense for that story. Okay. So in that, in that case, Lucia, you got the right idea. Use past tense if you're telling a story about your life. But in this particular exercise, they just wanted us to use present. So that's what we want to do here. Okay. So okay the answer, thank you. Yes, good. The answers are up here on the screen. And we need to move on to today's lesson so we have time to cover everything. So um, the first part of the lesson, I have um, an editing challenge that I'm going to give you guys. And then we're going to look in chapter one. So you can go ahead and turn over to chapter one. And Lucia, I am recording this. So you will be able to go back and look at these answers, OK? in the video okay so i will okay. post this video you know, i'll post this video later today around three or four in the afternoon um so okay. we're going yeah you can go ahead and open to chapter one in your book but we're going to start out with an editing challenge okay so Today, we're not really talking a lot about sentence structure. So um, what I want to do is just review a little bit of sentence structure with you just to keep your mind um, about writing correctly, using subjects and verbs and commas and all of that correctly. So here's the editing challenge for this morning. I have four uh, groups of sentences here. Each one of these is almost exactly the same, 
except for one thing in the middle of each, okay? If you look at the first one, I have a comma after car. Mateo wanted a new car, comma. He saved his money for six months, all right? What we're going to do is find out if these are correct or not, all right? The second one says Mateo wanted a new car. He saved his money for six months. There's no comma, okay? The third one, Mateo wanted a new car, comma, so he saved his money for six months. And the last one, Mateo wanted a new car, period. He saved his money for six months. Okay, so here's my question to you guys. Which one or ones, which, you know, one or more than one of these are correct? Or maybe are they all correct? What do you guys think? The I think first number three is correct. Oh, sorry. Okay, so Lucia, you say all of them are correct. Is that what you said, number Lucia? Three. Number three, teacher, and number four. Okay, number three and four are correct. Okay, and Alan, what do you think? Uh, the first and the last one, those are correct, I think. Okay, the first and the last one. Okay. Anybody else have another idea that, that they didn't say? Okay, so Lucia, you are correct. It's the the fourth, I mean, sorry, it's the third and the fourth that are correct, okay? And we're going to talk about why really quickly. The first one, we have subjects and verbs on both sides of the comma, right? But we do not have a fanboys the and, but, or, nor, for, yet, so. We don't have it. So this is what we call a comma splice error. And later in about two weeks, we're going to come back and do some a lot of practice with comma splice errors in your book. There's a chapter that's all about comma splices. Um, if you want to, you can start looking ahead at that um, chapter 19 chapter 19, but um, in a couple weeks, we will go over that. So basically, guys, I see this in, your, in most, of, most of your writing that I've seen so far. You have a lot of comma splices. It's just like subject, verb, comma, subject, verb, comma, subject, verb, comma, subject, verb, comma. Oh, yeah, I forgot to put a period. Okay, here's a period. And then you go on with subject, verb, comma, subject, verb, comma. And it goes on and on and on. And we need to be careful because that is a mistake in writing. All right. The second one is also a mistake and it's called a run on. And we will do more practice with these as well in a couple of weeks. But it's basically when you don't have anything to separate the subject and verb pairs, that is a mistake. Okay, so the third and fourth one are the correct ways that you could write this sentence. We can use a comma with fanboys. That makes a compound sentence. Or we can just create two separate sentences, putting a period after car. Okay, anybody have a question about that? So the first two were wrong. Any questions? No. no me okay, so um, I'm trying to get you to kind of open your eyes and start to see this in your own writing. That's why I keep talking about it and talking about it and talking about it. And we will keep talking about it because it's hard to correct our own mistakes when we're not used to seeing it. Okay. So comma splice errors are two subject verb pairs with only a comma in the middle okay and a run on error is when we have two uh, subject verb pairs with nothing in the middle do not do either of these errors okay we do not want just a comma and we do not want nothing in the middle Okay, so that is um, our editing challenge of the day. Let's go on to chapter one. 
open your books to page three. And today we're going to talk about how to write, how to begin writing. We're going to talk about the steps that we need to do when we begin writing. So this chapter is divided in five sections, but we're going to just the first two and the last two. So we're going to look at exploring a topic, identifying the topic, and then determining your purpose and your uh, exploring strategies. OK, so let's talk about exploring. What this means is let's say your teacher gives you an assignment. And they say, OK, guys, I want you to write. I want you to write a paragraph and it's due on Friday and you say, oh, man, OK. These are the steps you need to take. These are the questions you need to ask yourself when your teacher gives you a writing assignment. And this is for any class, even if it's a grammar class, if it's a writing class, if it's a reading class, history, science, whatever it is. So make sure you understand your task. You want to ask yourself four questions. How many words or pages should I write? OK. And your teacher might say it needs to be 500 words. OK, that's about maybe um, a little less than a page. That would be 500 words. Um, what is the due date for the assignment? That's pretty obvious, but we need to know that. Are there any special requirements that my writing should include? And sometimes, you know, you have to have uh, transition words or Maybe you have to have um, later in level three, we'll talk about using sources in our writing. Maybe you need to have those. You have to ask your teacher about that. And then will I write in class or at home? And that was pretty obvious for us now. This semester, we, we will do all our writing at home. <laughs> OK, but let's go on to the second part, identifying the topic. A topic is what you're writing about. When your instructor gives you a topic, sometimes you should narrow it and sometimes you should not narrow it. Narrow means to make it more specific. OK, so let's do a practice together. If I'm your teacher and I give you the topic to describe yourself. And then I give you a topic, give three reasons why people usually come to America. Do you think either of these topics will have to be narrowed? Will you have to be more specific in your writing about either one of these? What do you think? Like describing yourself, do I need to make that like more specific. Uh, yes, teacher. No, no. OK, it's kind of confusing, right? <laughs> it's yeah. like, what do you mean make it more specific? It's it's myself. That's specific. It's one person. But if I say describe yourself, there are so many things you can talk about your appearance. You can talk about your childhood. You could talk about your family and where you live, your neighborhood and and you know the your interests, the things you like. I mean, there's so many things about yourself. So, yeah, we would have to narrow this down into a category like okay, describe yourself. Okay, I'm going to write about my interests. Or I'm going to focus on my childhood or I'm going to focus on my goals in life. You would have to pick one of these because it would be too many things to put into one paragraph. So the first topic needs to be narrowed. And you can always ask your teacher and say, look, you know, you gave me this topic. I want to focus on my interests. Is that OK? And she or he might say, uh, yeah, that's a good focus. You know, um, check with your teacher before you start writing. I always tell students that because some of my students, they get this idea in their head. Oh, I know what this means. I'm going to take three hours and I'm going to write a paragraph and then they turn it in. And I said, no, that's not even the topic. That's not what I wanted you to write about. Right. And then they have to do the assignment again. 
So make sure you check with your instructor. Hey, this is what I want to focus on. This is what I want to write about. And um, that way you can know before you start writing that, hey, I've got, I've got exactly what my teacher wants here. So if, if they say describe yourself, you want to focus on something. You know, I want to focus on my childhood or I want to focus on uh, my goals, you know. So that would be a narrowed topic. The second topic, give three reasons why people usually come to America. That one does not need to be narrowed. It's already specific. You already have three reasons and you can describe each reason in one paragraph. If you were writing about your goals in life, then you could choose three goals and write about each one to describe yourself, you know, or maybe you choose your personality, three things about your personality. You could write about that for describing yourself. With the right idea. We're trying to get the right idea between what is too general of a topic and what is just perfect, a little bit specific, a little bit focused is what we want. Okay. Anybody have questions about this? Like identifying your topic. I'm on, I'm on page four in your book. This kind of goes through a couple of these quickly. No questions? All right, let's go to your purpose. We don't need to worry about your audience. Your purpose just means um, are you writing like a persuasive? Is it a persuasive topic? Am I trying to convince somebody to do something? Or am I just giving information about something? So to find a purpose, you just ask a couple of questions. Do I want to entertain? Do I want to persuade? Or do I want to inform? And for our class, we are only going to inform. We're giving information about a topic. Um, we're not going to use words like you should do this and you have to do that. That's more persuasive. That's to persuade. And um, Alan, I know you were in my, my reading class for two levels. You, do you remember we talked about purpose and reading? Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah, I remember. And it's the same, isn't it? Entertain, persuade, and inform. Um, so it's the same with writing and reading. Entertain, persuade, or inform. And in level one, we're focusing on inform. Just give information. In our class, we're going to do an illustration paragraph and a process paragraph. And so in two weeks, I'm going to share more about illustration. We're going to start with that one. OK, so now we're going to we're getting ready to do a little practice here. Um, how can we get ready to write? So let's say we know what our topic is. We know that the purpose is to inform. How do we start writing? So. Um, it's really a good idea to have a pre-writing strategy that you like to use. And I want to talk about three of these today. Pre-writing strategies are ways that you can start getting your ideas out of your head and on your paper. So when we write a paragraph, we're not going to just start um, with only with our paragraph. We want to get some ideas first and make sure that we have good ideas. And what I found, class, um, a lot of students struggle with this because like, I might have a topic that says, describe your personality. And one person might say, well, I am kind, I am nice, and I'm outgoing. Does anybody see a problem with that? If I was a student and I, I'm describing my personality and I want to write about I am kind, I am nice, and I'm outgoing, 
Is there a problem with that? Does anybody recognize a problem with, with my ideas? Buddy? Do they sound good to you? <laughs> no. Everybody's like, yeah, that's exactly. I'm kind, I'm nice, and I'm outgoing. Do you know the problem with that is kind and nice are synonyms, right? It's kind of the same thing. So you can't divide that into two different ideas, two different um, parts of your personality. We cannot do that because they're almost exactly the same. So we need to have that as one, being kind. Another one can be you're outgoing. You like to talk a lot. You like to be around people, okay? Those are different from each other. And so those are good to have in my paragraph or to explain. So how, you know, a lot of students make mistakes and then they have to rewrite their whole paragraph because they didn't stop and think about their ideas before they started writing. So that is why this step is very important. You want to explore uh, these pre-writing strategies, okay? So let me talk to you about these three pre-writing strategies. The first one is free write, is when you write about something without stopping for a limited period of time. So your journal writing is kind of like this. Um, you just think of a topic and you start writing, 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 and then you're trying to get some ideas out on paper. Some of you might really like this strategy because this is how your brain works. You just have tons and tons of ideas and you want to just write them down so you don't forget. And then later you can go back and say, hey, I like this idea and I like this idea and I'm going to make my paragraph about these two, right? Um, so that's a pre-writing strategy that you might like to use. Another one is brainstorm. Brainstorm is when you create a list of ideas. Okay, so I think, let's see, if you look on page five, page five at the bottom, they give you an example of free writing. It's kind of just writing your thoughts. It's not really organized, but it's just a beginning. Um, on page six, I want you to look at the bottom of page six. This is an example of brainstorming. This is usually what I do. My, my style of pre-writing. Look at the bottom of page six. Do you see how they make a list? Okay. The, top, the topic is family. And then this writer, they said, okay, I'm just going to get some ideas. Parental leave, violence in families, family stories, parent-child relationships, people in my family. All of, you see, they're just writing down some ideas. This is brainstorming. This is what we want to do before we start writing our paragraph because we need to organize our ideas. Okay, any questions about those two? No. Okay, um, so let's do the third one. And this one might be really good for you guys, especially if you're a visual kind of person. Um, it's called clustering. This is a, the third pre-writing strategy, clustering. When you cluster, you draw a word map. So the, this is like a picture. And you can see an example here. Also on page seven, at the bottom, there's another example of a word map, okay? So what happens is you put your topic in the middle of the page, and then you start to draw lines out, and then you put other ideas in those circles, and then you, you can keep going out. Um, like on page seven, the topic is movies. And then uh, on the right side, they say great acting. So we can talk about good actors. Denzel Washington, woo, he's a good actor. So we put that over there. You can just write um, your ideas in kind of a, a visual way like that. 
and my picture on the screen I have aspects of college life and I have four different aspects social organizations housing areas of study and options in the community I just got this from uh, a website off of Google just as one idea okay so that's called clustering your drawing a word map okay so I want to do some practice with you guys I want you to practice clustering and then I'm going to go back to our blackboard screen and you guys are going to show me on paper your your word map so everybody needs a piece of paper get a piece of paper and a pencil and the we're going to use one of our journal topics okay I do not want you to write complete sentences we're not writing a paragraph right now we're just doing the pre-writing to to see if we can get some ideas on paper so I want you to pick one of these topics and then in the middle of your page I want you to have a circle and then the topic so let's say I pick number four I'm going to put Sarah Sarah is my best friend okay so I put Sarah in the middle and then I'm going to start drawing things that I think about when I think about my best friend okay does everybody know what we're doing questions Not. okay so I'm going to give you about five minutes I'm going to be quiet and just let you start drawing your word map if you need help you can look at page seven at the bottom of the page that gives you another idea of what it looks like okay so I'll give you a couple minutes and then I'm going to see what you guys wrote
Okay, guys, that was about five minutes. It's okay if you're not finished, but I kind of want to see what your progress is. Um, does anybody want to share your cluster, your word map on a piece of paper? Can anybody turn on your video? Show me what you got. You want to start, Gerardo? Oh, uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Maybe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, I can see. Um, okay, in the middle, it says something about a house. Yes. Uh, my topic is living in a million dollar house. Okay. And so, then tell us, tell us what you put around it. Okay, around it, I put a, I like plants, like nature. Oh, plants, plants, <laughs> yes. Okay. And the other side, I put, I like gym exercising. And the other one is I enjoy big spaces. And the other one I put I love to cook in and out. So okay, in and out. You mean like inside and and outside? Yes, like grill outside and no. and big kitchen inside. So okay, I really like that. And you know what I like about your ideas? I like that you have four very different ideas. Each one is different from the other ones. You remember when I gave the example of describing my personality? If I say kind, nice, those are the, like the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. So that needs to be together as one. Each of your ideas is very different. So I like it. Um, if you're doing a, a paragraph on that, I would choose three of those. And then I would explain each one in a paragraph. Okay. That would be a really good start to a great paragraph right there. Um, and guys, that's the purpose of your journals, by the way. Your journals is your place to try and practice all of these things that we're learning, you know, organizing your ideas and making good sentences and, and all of that. So, so yeah, um, that's a really good pre-writing uh, practice that you did. Does anybody else want to share your word map? Anybody just dying to Make share what you wrote? Okay, go ahead, Lucia. Okay, we can kind of see the shapes. So in the middle, what does it say? Uh, in this side, I have Republicans, Donald Trump, Democrats, the Democrats, Joe Biden. Yeah. The online voting. Okay. Ele election campaign. Okay. Um, I I didn't finish. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, no. We're not supposed to finish. This is just a, a the the start of it. So your yeah. topic was elections is that one of the journal topics or you just created your own i, I just created now <laughs> okay <laughs> and that's okay too you just made your own topic but if your yeah. teacher gives you a topic and says i want you to write something about elections then you could pick you could pick one of those yeah yeah we could do that um and i like your your different ideas each one is very different around it so that's great okay good job. thank you <laughs> very good thank you okay who else does anybody else want to share it's it's totally quiet out there with carolina and alan i don't even know if they're still there <laughs> and sammy i'm here teacher i'm here <laughs> okay so is everybody good with this nobody wants to share anymore yes uh i i select uh the winter and like the the favorite season okay and i put um vacations go back home new year family delicious food and christmas Eve. oh that's great so vacations we got go back home delicious food family yeah so those are kind of your um your smaller ideas that are surrounding your 
your main topic of vacations. I like that, Alan. That's good. Okay, so um, we've looked at a couple of examples. And from now on, I want you to start doing one of these strategies for every topic that you're writing about. Okay, so you pick your topic and then you begin to do one of these three pre writing strategies before you actually start writing your real paragraph. And your homework assignment is going to be to choose one of the pre writing activities and do some of the pre-writing in your book. So there's uh, practice one is free writing, practice two is brainstorming, and practice three is clustering. And you're just going to pick one and do one, okay? And we'll talk about it on Thursday. But let's go back to my PowerPoint screen here and let's do a few practice questions before we go today to make sure that you understood what we talked about. And then I'll give you your homework. Okay, so let's start with um, Carolina. Carolina, can you help us with this one? I want you to answer this question. It says, as soon as you are given your assignment, you should what, A, B, C, or D? Not C, teacher. Consider your topic. Um, well, it is important to consider your topic. <laughs> but before, before you start looking at the topic, make sure you understand what you're supposed to be doing. And that's kind of the, like really, really like very, very beginning. Make sure you understand your task. And that... Um, well, it does say that on page three. Make sure, you, where does it talk about your task? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's on page three at the bottom. As soon as you're given an assignment, make sure you understand your task. And then step one is considering your topic. So yeah, that is a little bit confusing, right? You're real. You're really close. They're kind of both almost in the same category. Okay, Sammy, can you answer number two, please? It says exploring strategies are also known as what is A, B, C, or D? Which one did you say? B. Oh. It's pre-writing strategies. Pre-writing, pre-writing. Remember, it means before you begin writing your paragraph, you do the pre-writing, which helps you get some ideas on paper. This is on page five. If you look in the middle, kind of in the middle of page five. In the middle of page five, it talks about pre-writing strategies. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what we do when we're getting ready to write. Okay, if you write about, uh, if you write without stopping for a limited period of time, like twenty minutes or five minutes, what strategy are you using? Um, let's see, who needs to answer? Alan, can you answer this one, please? Um, D? Yes, that's correct. Free writing. That's on page five. Just writing without stopping. Yes, that's called free writing. Okay, good. Um, so we are done for today. Okay. Done today guys, we did great today. Um, Thursday is a big day. Remember I told you at the beginning of the class, um, I'm going to talk to you about what a paragraph is and the format rules for how to, how to organize it on a piece of paper. So, um, if you're not able to come to the video lesson on Thursday, just make sure you watch the, the Thursday video before you do your quiz. Okay before you do your quiz. Watch the Thursday video. 
I'm going to post it in Blackboard um, at the end of the day or by the end of the day Thursday. So um, for your homework that's due Thursday, I want you to pick one pre-writing strategy from chapter one. It's either practice one, two, or three from pages six to eight and just do it in your book, okay? Uh, there is no correct answer for these practices. So I don't have um, an, uh, <clears throat> a, an answer in my answer, uh, my answer key. It's just kind of your own ideas and I just wanted you to practice one of those, okay? And then begin working in the My, in my Writing Lab on W1.6 and W2.4 modules. 1.6 is all about verbs. Again, we're going to practice verb tenses, you know, past, present, perfect. I think they have past perfect in there. A lot of, a lot of tenses. And then 2.4 is about subject and verb agreement. So your lab post-tests are due on October 2nd. Okay, so begin working on those activities to get you ready for the tests. Um, so this week, again, let me remind you, on Friday, you have a quiz that's due. I'm taking it as a grade. Okay, you're going to submit the quiz in Blackboard by midnight on Friday. Okay, and then you also have a discussion board that's due on Friday. So your discussion board topic is already posted if you go to blackboard and click on the left side of the screen you'll see discussion board click on that and um, you're going to look for mistakes in paragraph formatting okay so again i suggest that you do the discussion board on thursday and i suggest you do the quiz on friday that I think would be the best for you guys. Discussion board on Thursday, quiz on Friday. But they're both due by midnight on Friday. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? Anybody have a question about that? Not sure. All right, so everything that I just said is in your lessons folder. You just need to kind of go and look at it and read it. You'll see it there. Okay. So that is it for today, guys. Thank you for joining me for the class. And I had fun talking about paragraphs. I'm really excited about Thursday and then also next week when we talk more about how to write a paragraph. It's going to be good stuff. Thank so, you for you. Teacher. <laughs> okay, teacher. Thank you. Teacher, teacher I yeah, have a question. It is not about like, the, the class, but do you know if the